Hello and welcome to my 24 tutorial. In the previous uh, two parts we started creating a simple cross the road uh, style game or the fr old school Frogger like game where our player needs to cross the road without getting hit by a car. So we'll finish the collision part and we finish the part where the cars move. And this is the product that we have so far. As you can see, we can move left and right. We can try to cross the road, but I hit the car, so it's game over for me. And let's improve it by writing game over here. So the user knows that the game is over. And let's add a new line here. So when we when we start the game, we try to cross, we can cross, okay. But if we get uh, get hit by a car like this, game over. So. Okay, uh, let's improve it further by actually, for example, um, increasing the score when the player crosses on the other side of the lane. So we will do, do that in the logic function. So in the logic function, we will say if player y is equal to a uh, number of lanes minus one so the last lane essentially if the player is on the last lane we will increase the score score plus plus we will put the player back on top of the lane that's why we actually put it on the zero because the top coordinate is zero and we go when we go down we actually increase the y coordinate Let's just say like this. Let's let's print a specific character which will uh, beep in Windows or Linux on or any PC, and that character is a hex zero seven character. You will actually see uh, here a sound that will indicate that we cross the cross the road. So let's. Oh, so I'm gonna die here. <laughs> oh, I, I cross the road. As you can see, I, um, as you can hear, sorry. Uh, there was a uh, sound like an error in Windows, but that's the the sound of that character. So we cross again, and we spawn on the top, and we hear the sound. So that will indicate to the user that you cross the road and you don't have to go further. Let's try to die in the game. Okay, so game over for us. A car ran us over. Okay, so far uh, that's one simple improvement. But to improve it further, let's. Let's uh, let's uh, improve the drawing function. The drawing function it will be very nice, as you can see in the game, if we would know that here uh, on on the first line it's start and the last line is end. So let's write some simple characters for indicating that uh, there's start and end. So in order to do that, here in the um, in this loop, we need to have one if. So if i is equal to zero, and and follow this. We open a new set of brackets and say uh, j is equal to zero or j is equal to width minus one. Then we will actually print the s character, which will indicate the start. So if we run it now, as you can see, we have the s on the left and s on the right in the starting line. So it's it's a little bit neater for the user to see where's the start lane and what's the end the end lane that he needs to cross his but to do this for the end lane we just copy this and let's uh, let's write it in a single line so we don't use a lot of space so you can see more and here will actually be number of lanes minus 1 and it stays the same and we let let's 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 add f like finish so when we run it, you see the S's and the F. And when we go to the F line, we actually get spawned on the start line again. So we go to the finish, we got spawned on the start. We got hit by a car, so it's game over. Okay, as you may notice that this is not fully random currently. And that's because we didn't uh, see the random generator. And we need to see it on the start of the program. So we, say we need to call S rand and seed it with some number. And the best uh, the best way to seed the random generator is with current time. So in order to seed it with the current time, we need to include the time library here. And when we include the time library here, we actually say time. 
null. And this will give us the current uh, Unix timestamp and you'll see our random generator. So now the cars will spawn differently. So as you can see we can go up and down and the cars will spawn. We can run from the car like this and cross the road. And we also don't show the score. We crossed the road a few times and the score was incremented but we didn't show it. So let's add that to our draw function also. So in the draw function you just say something like this score and let's print it score and let's end the line. So as you can see score is zero if we actually cross we have score one and the score oh okay I got run over by the car but you can trust me the score increments so we cross again we cross again as you can see the score increments and that's when, that's very 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 neat now uh, it's starting to look more like an actual game okay so far this is the game in the nutshell but as you can see the cars are only moving from left to right and i would like to make it to for the to cars to move actually maybe from left to right maybe from right to left so we can have something uh, something more interesting in order to do that we need to actually create extend our c lane function with a private variable that will be called right so we will seed it actually with the random so we will say if rand mod 2 and this will be one equal sign and not two equal signs and this way we will uh, have zero or one randomly uh, randomly actually generated and zero will indicate false and one will indicate true and the right will be seeded with true or false and in a minute you will see uh, how we will use this so we need to extend the move function now to say um, if we go right then we use this else we will use the exact same code but we will modify it so we don't push on the front now we push on the back we push on the back and we pop from the front so essentially the cars will move in a different in a different lane uh, now currently they also uh, still move right let's try to run the program again as you can see some some of the lanes are moving left and some of the lanes are moving right now and it, it's it's a little bit more interesting and uh, maybe easier to play it like this so you can see that you can wait here and you can actually go back and essentially and okay i got hit over because i was fooling around but now it's more interesting because we can we can we can print it like that we can also increase the number of lanes so for example if you say 10 lanes it will flicker a little bit more but you can see the cars are moving on the left and on the right and this way you can increase the difficulty of the game as you can see and now in order to make it m even more interesting we can create a function that will change direction in the in the um, c lane and that function will be called void change direction direction and let's uh, write it in line so we say that right is going to be equal not right so essentially we just negate the current position so if right was true it will be false and if it was false it will be it will be true and we can call this change direction in the logic so if the player for example passes the level we can um, we can change the direction of, of of some of the lanes so of which lane you may be asking let's randomize and say number of lanes and we actually choose randomly one of the lanes and change direction and okay i need to shorten this a little bit because i, I will not be able to pass it <laughs> sorry and as you can see let's wait and try to pass oh sorry i, I got hit press the wrong the wrong button and um, let's see okay I pass as you can see the last lane changed the direction 
So let's try to pass again to show this. Okay. Maybe nothing changed now. Or maybe maybe the first lane changed. I am I'm not so sure. So let's try to pass this. Okay. As you can see, the first lane changed the direction now. It's going on the right, it was going on the left. So now we actually made the game more interesting. Okay, so I encourage encourage you to actually try and improve the game. For example, to change the size of the map uh, dynamically. If you pass more, you get actually, uh, if you get more score, you actually change the map or something like that. But this is very rudimentary and simple. So I wanted to create a simple Frogger-like game or uh, cross the road game in C++ only using the basic console functions and some basic object-oriented programming to uh, show you how interesting it is to make something even simple like this by using some simple simple libraries and simple things in C++. And we actually need to um, improve this a little bit more by freeing the memory that we allocated here. And we need to create a destructor. So, the destructor for the game. And we will delete the player. And we will actually go through all, uh, through the map and actually delete everything. So let's do it like this, 4 into 0, y, i is less than map size, i++. Plus plus. And let's create a current pointer to the lane and we get the, the lane from the back. So the last, the last one, and we will pop from the back and delete the current element that we got. So this way we empty out the um, the map. So when we run our game, it's like this, and as you can see, some some lanes are moving faster, some are moving slower. It depends on the random random thing in the game. And that's how you can create a simple game in C++, simple cross-the-road Frogger-like game in C++. And I hope you liked the tutorial. And thanks for watching this tutorial. And please subscribe and hopefully I will see you in the next tutorial.